Hi ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Sunday Sessions. Now today we are making my least favourite Italian dish which is risotto. Now I say it's my least favourite, there's only two types of risotto that I like to eat. One is seafood because seafood makes everything better and two is mushroom because it's mum's fave. So once a year, whether it be Mother's Day or her birthday, I'll make mushroom risotto. She's lucky this year, she's having it twice. She's in the kitchen watching through the window. Um, we're gonna do a nice little mushroom risotto with three types of mushrooms. So I've got chirolles and chanterelles, which are these beautiful like wild mushrooms from Natura. Bit dirty, but I'm gonna teach you how to clean them because I'm quite anal about cleaning mushrooms. Um, but firstly, we need to start off by cutting our base for our risotto. The idea is that we're gonna make a blonde risotto and then flavour it with our mushrooms after. So, risottos take about 35 to 40 minutes to cook, right? So you want to get your base on quite early. I've got three sticks of celery, two white onions, and that's our base, right? Don't, don't worry about this garlic, this is for later. So, I'm just going to cut the celery down into pieces that are easier to work with. Just like that. So we're left with like nice little thin battens, right? So we're going to go all the way along using a sharp knife. This knife was sent to me by All Day Knives. And there's quite a nice little backstory behind these knives. So this knife handle is made out of recycled plastic from the sea. Helicopter's out again. But yeah, All Day Knives. Blades are sent over from Japan. Handles are all recycled plastic. Buy a knife, save the world. Shout out Greta Thunberg or whatever her name is. What's that girl's name? Right, that's the celery done. I'm just gonna lay this out along the board so it's nice and flat and that we can work with it. And then I'm just gonna dice it quite fine. We want it to be smaller than the grains of rice, right? And there we have some beautifully diced celery, right? Now, we'll do the same with the onions. Now, cutting everything really small means that it all cooks at the same time and it should just like go sweet and delicious very quickly so that we're not cooking a base out for a long time. Also, you don't want big massive chunks of like onion and celery in the base of your risotto. It's just not nice to eat. It's not a great mouthfeel. Also, while we're here, I'm just gonna show you, right, how I learned how to dice vegetables. Now, it wasn't with a sharp knife. When I first started in kitchens, I used a bread knife for everything, right? And I feel like the serrated edge means that you can take your time but chop through and make sure you've got all the slits that you want in the top of your onion, right? Just like that. And now this bit, you can saw. Instead of like swiping through with a really sharp knife, you saw through and it gives you the opportunity to move your fingers at the right time. Just like that. Lift my fingers up, knowing that I'm not going to cut them. And then, chop down. So if you don't have a really sharp knife, or if you're worried about using a really sharp knife, use a bread knife, right? Magic. Um, going to wait for our pan to warm up. Now, we want to cook the base of our risotto with no colour. We're making a blonde risotto, which is a white risotto that would normally be served just with parmesan and some olive oil on top. But the way I was taught to make risotto in restaurants was we never make things to order. So like you sit down in a restaurant, you're like, I'm going to get the risotto. Your risotto base is already cooked, right? So it's in the fridge. I've already got my celery and my onions in it and it's seasoned and it's at a point where it's 80%. Then we add our garnishes and whatever it is to make it delicious. So that's now how I make risottos at home. I don't put everything in the pan and stir it and like add my mushrooms too early and stuff. I feel that we're going to create as much mushroom flavour as possible in a separate pan and then add it to our risotto in order to finish it. We're going to start cooking our base. I'm going to go olive oil, a fair bit of olive oil, into a hot pan. Let the olive oil come up to temperature. And then we're going to go in with our onions. our celery.
Onions and celery in the pan. I've dropped the heat to low. We're just gonna let it slowly cook off. Two cracks of salt. And we're gonna cook this, no color, soft and translucent for about 15 minutes, yeah? This is gonna provide a sweetness, a depth, a starting flavor to our risotto. Now, let's talk about mushrooms. I'm a fun guy and there's not much room in the industry for me to be in. Um, two terrible jokes, but I have Girolles and Chanterelles, right? These are wild mushrooms from France. And as you can see, they're all a bit fucking grubby, yeah? Now, mushrooms are like sponges. So look, if I drop this mushroom into the water, yeah? And I start to wash it in water, my mushroom collects all the water, right? Collects it all. And we fucking basically made this mushroom worthless. Yeah? So what we're gonna do is, I know it's fucking long, right? But it's things that I had to do as a, as a chef for a long time, is little pastry brush, or in this case, a paintbrush. Gonna dab the end of it in water, flick off the excess, and we're gonna painstakingly brush away any dirt and any grit, right? Mushrooms are great. We don't want to lose their flavor. We don't want them to be full of water and pissy. So we're just going to give them a little brush so that there's any dirt comes off, right? So look, now we've got a nice clean mushroom. So I just brush, so I'm brushing with the frills, right? So I'm getting my brush hairs into it. It's nice and clean. So I'm going to do that for to all of these mushrooms. Some are dirtier than others. I went mushroom picking once with Gennaro. And yeah, it was great, but you're like in the fucking rain. The crepe are ruined. You've got to bend over and pick them up. I mean, Gennaro knows everything about mushrooms that there is to know. Like you point at them and be like, oh, that's a slippery jack. Or oh, look, porcini. So, you need to pay respects, man. are done, I'm going to move on to these. Now these are easier to prep, right? You can see if they're dirty or not, but also the way we do them in restaurants is we split the middles like that. Just check if there's anything on the inside and if there isn't, you're good to go. So I'm just going to split these. Any dirty ones, I'll give a little brush. Now you can do this with any mushrooms, man. You can do this with buttons, chestnuts, portobellos, the cheap ones, whatever. Third mushrooms are these. Now, these are dried porcinis, yeah? Porcinis are considered the king of all mushrooms, right? 55 pound a kilo, they're fucking expensive. I tried to get some fresh ones and I couldn't. So I ordered these dry porcinis that are mushrooms that are cut, then dried. But what you get with dry porcinis is that when you rehydrate them, you get all of this beautiful mushroom water and we're gonna use that to finish our risotto so we get that last hit of like mushroom goodness. So all I've done is I've taken the dry porcinis, I've rinsed them under cold water so that there's no bits of shit still in them and then covered them in boiling water and let them sit. This works with like Chinese dried mushrooms as well like shiitakes and all the other stuff but a good dry porcini, delicious. Yum. Now, Let's check our base. So look, I'm ever so slightly starting to colour. You see the little flecks of like caramelisation. Now, I know that I've sweated this down enough. So this, the point, the reason that we get caramelisation is that we've cooked so far that now we're now releasing sugar. 
if I cook this any more, it's going to start to go darker and more sweeter, but I don't want that for my risotto. That's great for like ragu bases and stuff like that. But for this, we want to keep the color quite neutral and blonde until we start adding the shit we want to add into it. So I'm going to go in with some Arborio. Now this is risotto rice, um, short stubby grain, short stubby grain from Italy. And look, you see, short and stubby. Doesn't look like normal rice. Normally you'd wash rice, right, before you cook it, whether it's basmati, Japanese, or whatever, you'd wash it. But for this, we need the starch. So we're gonna go in with two big handfuls, which is probably about 200 grams. I'd say 100 grams per person. Now, we're just gonna stir this about. Just gonna add a touch more rice. It's just four of us eating. Now, you wanna cook risotto in a high-sided pan so that you don't evaporate all your liquids too quickly. George has just told me this off camera. It's vital information that I've forgotten about. So, what we're looking to do now is crack the grains of rice, right? And we're not, we don't mean crack as in like, in half. I'll show you, when we get to that point, we wanna cook almost either side of the grain of rice before we deglaze our pan with white wine, right? You see, I'll show you this one in particular. See this little grain of rice? You see how it's gone? It was white all the way through, but we've gone from white in the middle to like almost see-through on either sides, right? That's what cracking the grain is for risotto. That's your, the point where you know, right, I'm ready to start adding white wine and stock to slowly cook this rice in order to knock out the starch and get it to the right consistency. That's your first warning sign. That's, yeah, cool, you're good to go. Food is about looking, understanding, feeling. Now, every time you make a risotto, if you get the rice to that point and then you add your white wine, your risotto's gonna be fine. Now, white wine, one large glass, I'd say that was. One large glass. And now we're gonna crank the heat back up. So what we're gonna do is anytime there's liquid in the pan, we have to fucking stir, right? We have to knock out the starch. You see how the, the wine's gone from watery translucent wines are now picking up almost like a cloudiness that's the the wine drawing the starch out of our risotto rice right so i'm going to keep knocking it keep working it this is our first level of like creaminess we've cooked off our wine but our rice is releasing its starch right you can see it catching on the bottom of the pan cook the wine out completely second most important thing about making risotto right is warm stock. I have some warm chicken stock here. You can make it, you can buy it, you can do whatever. But I've got a nice warm chicken stock. You can hear, if you listen, I've gone from evaporating liquid to now frying again, right? You can hear that the rice is starting to fry. You don't ever want to be frying risotto. So I'm going to add my first bit of stock. Now, warm stock means that it's gonna cook quicker. Don't go in with all your stock. Get enough to get around the bottom of the pan. Now it's about cooking the stock, knocking the rice around so that we're releasing the starch. My stock's slowly starting to reduce. And you'll hear it, it'll go from steaming and cooking liquid away to then frying again. Then we add our next bit of stock. It's all about knowing the triggers. Look, now listen. That's frying, right? Stock. creaminess happens here. There's no other way of making it happen. You can't rush it and do it last minute. You have to stir the entire time. Oh, oh, fuck, bro. Fucking sandals, bro. Right, so this is our final bit of stock. Now, this risotto has eaten about a litre of chicken stock, right? I like risottos al dente. 
So I like a little bit of texture in the grain of rice. I don't like it to be like smooth rice pudding, porridge, bullshit. I want a little bit of like bite on the rice grain. Which is where we're at now. I'm gonna take, just for now, because I need to use this burner again, I'm just gonna take a little bit of this porcini water. Now, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna stick it on a low heat just here. Let it gently bibble and bubble and bibbly bobbly bits. Um, and we're gonna move on to cooking our mushrooms, right? Now, cooking mushrooms, you need a very, very, very hot pan, right? If we don't cook mushrooms in a hot pan, they piss out all their liquid and don't build any flavor. The pan has to be hot in order for the mushroom to like be shocked when it goes in and start to caramelize straight away. And that's how we're gonna build the flavors, right? So we've got our mushrooms, we prep them. I'm just gonna slice up some garlic. I'm just gonna do two big cloves of garlic. Got a little bit of rosemary that I'm just gonna run my knife over. Just as like a little, little different flavor, a little kick of something else, yeah? We're thinking, now thinking about finishing because it's all gonna come together pretty quickly. Just gonna chop up some parsley. Pan's hot, olive oil. <sighs> Mushrooms in. Gonna take these rehydrated mushrooms and just squeeze out the moisture. Gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the middle. I'm gonna go in with my garlic. And the smell changes and it smells delicious. And I look some little bits of rosemary. I'm just gonna bring this all together. That pan was screaming hot, right? None of these mushrooms are burnt. We've sealed them so they can't piss out the water. And we've got like a nice, if you look here, we've got like a nice char. That's where the flavor's developing. We've cut our, our garlic really fine so they can cook in time. Just like this. And basically when we started to pick up color, that's a nice bit of porcini. When we started to pick up color, we're building flavor, we're building depth. Bring our risotto back in. Porcini juice goes into our risotto. Now this is finishing stage, right? So I've made it pretty wet. I'm gonna introduce my mushrooms. Now I'm doing this quite hard because I want this last bit to build up all of the starch. So I'm shaking the pan and stirring at the same time. Give it a little taste for seasoning. Fucking yum. Right, so we need to be careful now because adding cheese to this is gonna make it go and suck it up. So I'm gonna add my Parmesan and the risotto will take quite a bit of Parmesan in. Stir that in. We're gonna go in with our parsley. Finish it with some nice olive oil. And then we're gonna to toss. See how it's forming one big wave. Now, get it on a plate. Just checking the consistency. You want it to be like wavy, but still uniform and together, right? Put it into the middle of our plate. And then what we do in restaurants. So we just tap the base of the plate. 
so the risotto spreads out. I'm gonna go a little parmesan. A little strike of some lemon zest. And then Capazana to finish. word gloopy yeah but your risotto has to be like shiny and gloopy and all of this like it needs to be moist and it needs to make like shagging noises yeah but it's fucking delicious it's like deep and earthy from like porcinis and the mushrooms it's got a silkiness Saltiness from Parmesan on top, fresh parsley, lemon zest over the top. We didn't use juice, we just used, used the zest, right? And it gives you that, that, it's a less of a harsh citrus background and it's fucking great. Also, this will probably make enough for four people. If there's two of you, set this in the fridge, roll it into balls, Flour, egg, breadcrumb, deep fry it. Thank you later, Arancini. Dog's bollocks. Spazzare e lavare. Buon Natale. Parmigiano Reggiano. Um, Totti. Um, AC Milano. Tuscany. Napolitolian. Italian. You know what the best thing is? I watch this episode back with mum. Me and mum watch all the episodes back before they go out, right? And mum will sit there and at the end of the rest of it, she'll be like, oh, that was delicious. I remember eating that. And if you want to feel like how my mum feels after eating mushroom risotto, make this mushroom risotto. You won't regret it. Why am I, yeah? <laughs> Corker, so good. Gennaro, thank you. Gennaro is the first person to teach me how to make mushroom risotto. So Gennaro Contado, this one's for you. Love you. Safe. It's fucking yum. Like, actually, delicious. A little bit more cheese. <laughs>